Welcome to the third webinar in the USDA Foods Processing from Soup to Nut series, USDA Foods Order Management Part 1. And now we have two polling questions. The first question, in which region are you located? And it looks like we have representatives from all of our regions today with most coming from Western and Mid-Atlantic, followed by Northeast, all of them about 19%. And our second polling question, where do you work? And most of you today are coming from the state agency level at about 29%, followed by USDA, and then school districts, as well as a handful of processors. Glad to have people from all different groups and from all around our country joining us today for this webinar. Now I'll introduce the moderator, Shanique Bridges. Shanique began her federal career in 2014 in the USDA Food and Nutrition Service Southeast Regional Office as a program specialist in the Special Nutrition Program before coming to the National Office in the Food Distribution Division in 2015. Prior to joining USDA, Shanique worked with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services in the Bureau of Food Distribution in various capacities. In Florida, she managed the ordering and inventory management of the USDA Foods Program for over 13 years. Good afternoon, everyone. Now that we know a little bit about where you guys are from, we just want to give you a little insight about where we're from. We are the Child Nutrition Operations Branch, essentially known as CNA, at USDA FNS headquarters Every day of the Division of the Food Nutrition Service, the division is organized into six branches. As you can see, the little arrow, where we fall into this uh, organizational breakdown. We work directly with states and processors and AMS on a daily basis to ensure orders are processed timely, flow smoothly through the systems, and work out any procurement and delivery issues when needed. In addition, at the national level, we closely monitor the NPRs against bonds. Here we are, from left to right, in the top left corner, you got Scarlett Galeas, you got Mark Crewson, of course, Shanique, Lene Potter, Roland Barnes, Margie Livingston, Gwen Glenn, Rhonda Lewis, Danielle Lyons, and our fearless leader, Ms. Peggy Kentville. Today, our topics will cover catalog and schedule, the ship to party process, order review and monitoring, Order changes and communication, <coughs> receiving and receiving. We have three presenters from CNOPS today for our webinar. First up, we have Rhonda Lewis, who will present on weather CM catalog, purchase schedules, order changes and communication. Rhonda is a native Virginian and has been with FNS FDD for the past 11 and a half years. In her early years with the department, Rhonda managed the fruits and vegetables program, and she currently manages the bulk products in the livestock and poultry program. Prior to FNS, Rhonda has spent 14 years working with the Defense Commissary Agency. Then we will have Mark Crewson, who has been with USDA, the USDA's Food and Nutrition Services since May of 2003. Mark, Mr. Crewson began his FNS career as a program analyst in the Food Distribution Division Operations Branch Household Program, working on the Commodity Supplemental Food Program. In 2005, he transitioned to his current position working on the National Food Lunch Program, Child Adult Care Food Program, Summer Food Service Program as a food order manager and member of the processing initiative team. As a food order manager, he currently works with dairy, eggs, fish, and as a PIP member, he currently reviews monthly performance reports and oversees inventory protection in addition to providing ad hoc analysis. Mark will present on ship to and receiving and receiving information. Lastly, we have Margie Livingston. After graduating from college, Margie accepted a job with the GSA from 1978 to 92 through 1980. Margie joined FNS in 1980 and worked in the Nutrition and Technical Services Division, Food Labeling Specialist, for, from 1982 through 1990. In 1990, Margie joined FDD and worked in many areas of the division. She has worked with the CFAP program for, for schools and monitoring CFAP funds in the testing environment for the process commodities inventory management system, TSIM, and manage the warehouses for FDPIR, CSSP program. Currently, Margie is responsible for the NSLP purchases of bulk chicken and bulk turkey for NSLP program. So 
from June 1990 to June of this year, she has worked a wonderful 26 years with food distribution. Over all 38 years of government service. Margie will present on the topic of order review and monitoring. We will now have a polling question. And our next polling question is, how often are USDA foods purchased? Monthly, quarterly, annually, biannually, or all of the above? And about two thirds of you selected the last choice, all of the above. Depending upon the product, USDA foods can be purchased on any of these intervals, monthly, quarterly, annually, biannually. Ron, we'll now pass it over to Rhonda, who will provide more details on this topic, actually. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be discussing information about the catalog, order due dates, and the AMS purchase schedule. The catalog contains all the material codes as listed in the foods available list for the upcoming school year. Timeline is as follows. In January, the master catalog is uploaded, and then in February, FNS ensures that the delivery dates agree with the AMS purchase schedule. And in April, the catalog closes for the early school year delivery dates. The order due dates for school year 16, 17 are as follows. April 1st, we have fruits and vegetables. April 7th, poultry. April 14th, livestock and pollock. April 18th, dairy and cheese. And April 19th, grains, peanuts, and oil. This is the initial order due date. Then the catalog will open periodically throughout the school year for later deliveries. The order due dates are based on a timeline that allows for adequate procurement production up by the vendor, and a timely delivery. On the screen, you'll see a view of the domestic order entry screen. Here we have for school year 16, 17, beef special trim and other bulk items, which close, is due to close on April 14th for deliveries of July 15th, 2016 to June 30th, 2017. On the screen as well, it lists the delivery date, the order due by date, and the most recent purchase price. No, this is what the states see when they input their order quantities in WebSCM, not the processor. With all of the different material codes, each has its own separate purchase cycle. Monthly, we have beef, pork, poultry, and cheese. Quarterly, grain, peanut, oil. Semi-annually, we have bulk, fresh and frozen, bulk, apples fresh, and pollock. And yearly, we have the frozen IDIQ fruit bulk. Things that influence the purchase cycles, order due date and the catalog openings and closings. And on this slide, this is a table of the AMS commodity purchase schedule. This schedule represents a collaboration between AMS and FNS. The list contains the material codes, the material description, as well as the delivery dates available for it to be ordered. This schedule provides FNS a general timeline for procurement. And as you'll see on the slide, course B, the first delivery periods are for July. These orders will be awarded in early June, and the frequency of these solicitations are monthly. But please note, this schedule is intended to give general guidance for the upcoming school year. Changes can occur at any time without prior notice. To view the purchase schedule, similar to what you see on the screen, you can go to www.ams.usda.gov slash selling dash food slash solicitation. About halfway down the page and under Solicitation schedule is the link. And there are two tabs on this schedule. The first tab is for meat, poultry, eggs, and fish. The other, fruits and vegetables, beans, and nuts. The AMS uh, email list. AMS has a website, AMS-CP News, for you to sign up to receive emails regarding U.S. 
FDA solicitations, awards, notices to the trade. You'll see the link is uh, noted at the bottom of the slide. You just fill that in and check the boxes for the information you wish to receive. Then you'll receive an email notification, and you must open the email from AMS CP News at symbol ams.usda.gov to complete your registration in order to receive these notifications from CP News. And now for our next polling question, if you must, when is the best time to change a destination on a shipment? 75% of you selected the first answer prior to purchase and approved by SDA status. That is correct. We definitely prefer destination changes prior to purchase. However, the best time to make any changes are prior to purchase when the order is in approved by SDA status. Changes cannot be made while the order is on invitation. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the ship party process. For each destination where you will receive USDA materials, you must have a ship to party ID. This is true for both states and processors and ensures a smooth process from ordering through delivery. For states and processors with several warehouse and plant locations, it is also vital that you communicate to the states and recipient agencies what materials and sales orders should deliver to which locations due to plant loading or material requirements, for example, frozen versus chilled versus dry. To obtain a ship party ID for a new destination, contact the web PM ship to help desk at the email address wbscm ship to at symbol fns.usda.gov and provide the following plant or warehouse related information. For process, you need to provide the processor name or processor name care of warehouse name. For states, including state distributing agencies and recipient agencies, you need to provide the warehouse name. You also need to provide the plant or warehouse address, including street address, city, state, and zip code, and the plant or warehouse contact phone number, fax number, and email address. Finally, you need to provide the states with which you do business that need to be assigned to that plant or warehouse, which will allow those states to select your plant and or warehouse locations when they are placed their orders. To inactivate a plant or warehouse no longer used, Contact the Web SEM Ship 2 Help Desk, provide the Ship 2 Party to be inactivated, and request that all assigned states for that Ship 2 Party be disassociated. A Ship 2 Party review is requested by FNS once a year prior to the start of ordering for the new school year, but please do not wait if you have a change. Up-to-date plant, warehouse, and contact information is critical to the USDA foods delivery process. And now it's time for our next polling question. How often should you review your order status report? And over half of you selected weekly, followed by about a quarter of you saying monthly. We like weekly. <laughs> However, the order status report, at a minimum, monthly. But depending on the number of loads you receive, you should consider reviewing the report more frequently. Good afternoon to all. Today, I will cover the order review and monitoring under the Foods Order Management for Processors. This includes order submission and review, order status report, bulk ordering guidance, order tracking and monitoring, and revisiting the order status report. Order submission and review. States in the orders based on the domestic order entry screen delivery periods in WebSCM. FNS reviews orders after the catalog has closed and review orders throughout the school year. Orders must be reviewed by FNS for accuracy. This includes splits, quantities, states entitlement, appropriate funding, and approval to AMS for purchasing. An important tool that can be used is the order status report, which is used to provide details on orders throughout their cycle. This report is updated in real time meaning the report should be slightly different if requested before a sales order is updated in WebSCM. Processors must review this report frequently and identify new orders added, check materials, 
ensure that orders are sent to the correct plant and plant location is active in Weber CM. Check quantities ordered by delivery dates and capacity. Project and monitor the state's inventory. Multiple fields can be used. Most frequently used fields include requested delivery date, material, ship to party, which is the plant, and status. Processors should run an orders status report weekly. Processors should run the report wide open, meaning running the report without any restrictions. This will ensure that the report will capture the following information. Correct ship to party, correct material for the plant, ensure delivery periods are correct and evenly distributed throughout the school year, and sales orders are not front loaded in the beginning of the July through September delivery period. Monitor the report to make sure that the quantities do not exceed processor's plant capacity. Review delivery dates and review orders throughout the school year. Be aware of the state's inventory on hand and be mindful that while the catalog is open, state and school districts are entering sales orders. That is why it is important to run the order status report weekly. Do not restrict criteria so that the errors can be caught. Only any requested delivery dates for the present school year, which is school year 17. This is a view of the order status report request screen. The more fields used, the more specific the report will be generated. Examples of fields used. Program. These are the various domestic feeding programs. The National School Lunch Program, which is NSLP. Child and Adult Care Food Programs. CACFP, Summer Food Service Program, SFSP. Request a delivery date. To run this report, a delivery date range is required. So if the delivery date is for the month of April, enter a range of 04-01-2017 through 04-30-2017. Materials. This is the material that is processed at your plant. An example is 10103 chicken large chilled bulk. Sold to party. The number that is associated with the recipient agency whose funds are used to buy their product, usually a state agency. Ship to party. The number associated with the processor's destination actually receiving the product. Status. Orders that are in approved by SDA, approved by SPA agency, on invitation, purchase or order received. After all information has been entered onto the report request screen, you will then execute the request. Once the report has been executed, the report will then be generated. This report is generated based on your selected criteria. You can customize the report output by selecting a view from the view drop down list. If you do not select a view, the system defaults to the order status view which will display every field automatically displayed in the table. To customize a view, click on the picture of the wrench at the far right corner of the gray bar. You can add fields. For example, you can add the created on field. This field displays the date the sales orders were rolled up into WebSM. This date is important to identify new orders. Once you click the wrench, the setting box will appear. The setting box lists all the available fields needed to customize your report. Remove or add columns in order you want the report to be displayed. You can move a column up or down by using the arrows in the Change Sequence section. This is where you can add the created on date. After you have selected the columns in the order you need, title the view, click Save As, and then click OK. This view will be added to the drop-down view of the report. When selected, it will display the column in the order you set up. Once the report is in the desired format, you can choose to export your report to Excel. Exporting into Excel enables a simpler and more efficient way to sort and filter your report. Bulk Ordering Guidance This section covers two areas. First section covers guidance for split bulk ordering, which includes one half truck splits, bulletin board, transfers, splits without correlations, 
The second section covered bulk chilled poultry and beef ordering guidance. Sales orders for any bulk product may be submitted in one half truck increments without correlation. The orders will be entered. The orders will either be combined into full trucks by the Child Nutrition Operation Branch staff, or staff will work with processors to fill the full truck order. FNS will correlate these orders. To fill a truck for varying quantities of a bulk, states may post a request to split a truck on the WebSCM split shipment bulletin board. The analysts may also supply less than truck load amounts to a state by transferring bulk pounds in inventory along with an entitlement dollar credit. The following bulk materials should be ordered in any quantity. Bulk fresh apples, bulk fresh potatoes for frozen potatoes, and dehydrated bulk sweet potatoes. These materials should not be correlated. Analysts may supply less than truck low amounts by transferring bulk pounds in inventory. States with excess inventory can transfer small amounts of inventory between small states. Bulk poultry guidance, quantity guidance. When a sale order exceeds more than 50 line items, FNX experienced problems in approving these orders in WebSCM. Therefore, when entering sales order, the number of line items per sales order will be limited to 50 trucks, which is 1,800,000 pounds, across the April 1st through June 30, 2017 delivery periods in WebSCM. If sales orders have been entered with 50 trucks across all six delivery periods, enter a new sales order starting over with the first delivery period, which will be April 15, 2017. This is not an issue with small states, but the larger states need to adhere to 50 trucks per delivery period. Chill poultry and beef bulk ordering delivery dates. USDA purchased chilled bulk poultry and livestock throughout the school year for July through June deliveries. We purchased bulk chicken and bulk turkey all year, but in WebSCM, the bulk chicken and bulk turkey order submissions are listed in WebSCM catalog, which are notated on the slide. There are only a few delivery dates in WebSCM for later in the school year because April 2016 is too soon to schedule sales order for pet production. The initial delivery date on the sales order submitted by states is April 7, 2017. This is not a true delivery date as the real delivery dates will not be known until we are well into the school year and have more accurate inventory and production information. The last six shipping periods of the school year are placeholder dates and states can order additional loads based on their capacity and on their remaining entitlement funds. But the initial delivery date will be the one listed. The bonus beef, which is a fresh product, has only one delivery date in WebSCM, which is January 2nd through January 4th, 2017. This is another placeholder date. The processor will review all orders and determine the actual delivery date based on the capacity of their facilities. The goal is to also distribute these orders evenly as possible throughout the school year. Bulk chill poultry and beef delivery date assignment process. Each month, the processor requests an order status report which displays their current sales orders in WebSCM. The processor reviews the state's inventory and compares to orders in WebSCM to decide what orders to list on the AMS solicitation. FNS updates the delivery dates on the sales order to reflect the AMS monthly solicitation as requested. For example, the first solicitation for a bulk chicken is July 16 through July 31st. The processor chooses which sales order to list for this delivery period. Then they notify FNS so that the appropriate delivery period on the sales order is updated. There are different processes on delivery date assignments for all other materials. State selected delivery date. Processors must review upon entry and request an order status report every month. Processor ensures that the quantity is evenly distributed over all dates. Processor reviews state's inventory and their capacity to decide what sales order to list on AMS solicitation. FNS updates the delivery date on the sales order to reflect processor's requested delivery date. Now let's revisit the order status report. The order status report is used to provide details on orders throughout their cycle. 
The report needs to be monitored regularly or bi-weekly for plant delivery dates and correct material. In April, after the orders for your materials have been entered, request an order status report and review your July through September sales orders. Contact FNS for any changes such as quantities, delivery date, ship to parties, or cancellation. Orders shouldn't be bunched up or front loaded in the beginning of the year. Order status report definitions. Like it is called, the order status report is important to note orders in the right status. FNS works hard to make sure that no orders are left behind. It is important to monitor orders and make certain that no orders are left behind at any point of the purchase cycle. All orders that are originally entered into the system should be accounted for before the end of the purchase cycle. Monitoring each order will ensure that it has made its way through the WebSCM system for purchase and delivery. Status definitions. Approved by SDA, sales orders have been rolled up and consolidated from the recipient agency and the state distribution agency and have been submitted to FNS for purchase. Approved by SPA agency, FNS has approved the sales order for purchase. On invitation, sales orders that have been placed on the invitation for solicitation to receive bids. Changes cannot be made until the order has been purchased, awarded, or unpurchased. Purchased. Sales order has been fully purchased by AMS and a contract has been awarded. Continuing with the sales order status definition. Returned by FSA AMS. Sales orders have been returned for the following reasons. Unavailable product. No bids received. High prices. Vendors constraints. Purchase order modification. Resubmit to AMS FSA. Sales orders that have been resubmitted to AMS usually after not purchased or FNS has an updated a destination change. And the last definition is order received. These are sales orders that have been received by our customer, which is the state and our processor. And the order has been received and entered into WebSM. Changes for sales orders can be processed through the WebSM most easily when their orders are in the following statuses, approved by SDA or returned to FSA AMS. When an order is in one of the above statuses, a change is requested, email the appropriate specialist. Please do not email AMS. When orders are changed in these statuses, they are updated in WebSCM immediately, in real time. And once the change is processed, processors are encouraged to run an order status report to ensure this change is updated. No, processors should be reviewing these order status reports at least monthly with a wide open criteria, as Margie explained earlier. So the optimum time is prior to purchase, after purchase. Once the orders are in the purchase status, and a change is requested, email the appropriate FNS specialist and their backup. The required lead time to process a destination change is at least 35 days prior to the beginning of the delivery period. For example, May 1st through May 15th, a request must be initiated not later than March 27th. For IDIQ, at least 45 days prior to the beginning of the delivery period. And now we have our final polling question of today's webinar. Within how many days after receiving a shipment should you receive in web SDM? And the top answer is two business days with about half of you selecting this option, followed by two calendar days according to a quarter of you. The answer is two calendar days. Shipment should be received in WebSCM within two calendar days of receiving below any shipment. Now let's talk a little bit about receiving and receiving. Approximately two to five business days prior to delivery of a sales order, you should receive a ship notice or ASN from the vendor. You need to review the ASN to be sure you are expecting the specified order at the specified location 
and ensure that the plant or warehouse is aware of the order and ready to provide a delivery appointment when the vendor transportation company calls. You should alert the applicable FNS specialist if you have not received an ASN two business days prior to the end of the delivery period for which you are expecting an order. The shipment receipt or web goods receipt is a means of confirming the state recipient agency or processor received the products or the state distributing agency on behalf of the schools. The goods receipt provides details on what was received, when, how, who signed for it, and if there was any damage, shortage, or overage. It is important that acceptance is documented with the receiver's signature, acceptance date, and quantity. The goods received can be entered by the processor or the state distributing agency, recipient agency, order manager, and is used for the three-way match verification process between the warehouse, the vendor, and the customer. Goods receipt entry needs to be made within two calendar days of the receipt. Inaccurate or untimely goods receiving can negatively impact payment to the USDA Foods vendor. Processing a goods receipt updates the sales order line item status to order received. It's part of the matching process used by finance to pay vendors and stores information for reporting purposes. One of the purposes for entering the goods receipt is to track where the order is within the delivery process. Has it left the vendor? Has it reached the state or recipient agency's warehouse or the processor's plant? The second purpose is to verify the quality of goods received. The state or processor is responsible for entering the following information about the goods. Good quantity is the actual inventory that has been received that is not damaged. Damaged quantity is the inventory that has been damaged due to transport, unloading, or improper storage. Description is a free text field where the customer may enter information about the shipment. For example, if there was damage, this field is used to describe the damage, whether the damage poses a food safety concern, and whether they are requesting a refund or replacements. A processor or recipient agency that receives product that is defective in some way needs to contact the state distributing agency who ordered the product to start a USDA foods complaint in web SCM. The USDA Foods Complaint Team is working hard to improve how complaints are handled and resolved. The best practice when you receive direct delivery of USDA foods is to check the temperature of frozen and refrigerated foods, verify quantity of product received, and examine the quality of product and condition of the packaging or containers before the truck leaves. Take photos of problems are observed and also note any problems on the bill of lading. We understand that sometimes you have a situation requiring immediate attention. You can contact the USDA Foods Complaint Team via the complaint hotline at 800-446-6991 or via email to the complaint mailbox at USDA Foods Complaint at symbol fns.usda.gov. The complaint team will work with AMS procurement as well as reach out to the appropriate state agency. The state distributing agency will enter the complaint information in WebSCM. The processor should enter receipts in WebSCM, including overages and shortages, within two calendar days of receipt. The state or processor is responsible for entering a shipment receipt in WebSCM when goods are delivered. To do this in WebSCM, click on the Operations tab, the Processing tab, Shipment Receipts folder, and enter Shipment Receipt link. Enter the order number for the order you wish to receive. This can be the sales order number, purchase order number, or delivery document number. Click search. Searching by the three types of documents discussed will bring up a list of purchase orders linked to the document you entered. After clicking search, a table displays showing all purchase orders that match your search criteria. Click the link for the line item you wish to receive. Within the order, there may be multiple line items. Select the line item you wish to receive by checking the checkbox in the row column. Enter the following fields. Signed by is the person at the customer organization who signed for the delivery. Date received is the date on which the delivery was signed for. 
rail car slash BOL is the document number for the bill of lading. And again, comments is a free text field for entry of comments about the delivery. Click Submit Receipt. If you wish to receipt and have checked the checkbox for all line items on the order and there were no damages or shortages, click Receipt All. It is important to note that information added to the receipt header will only populate line items if you click Receipt All. States and processors need to accurately receipt on the bill of lading as they receipt product into the warehouse and in WebSCM. Processors have the added responsibility of accurately receiving in their monthly performance reports so that the receipt data agrees in all three places. If you have received damaged goods, you will want to indicate that on the receipt by clicking the box in the damaged quantity column, entering the information about the damaged goods, including the quantity damage, when it was discovered, carrier information, and any miscellaneous details, and then clicking the OK button to submit the form. For split shipments and a couple of variable weight bulk materials, there are some special receiving requirements. For split shipments, the goods receipts entered into WebSCM should match the quantities receipted from the bills of lading for each part of the split. Transfers may be processed, if necessary, to make the quantities match allocations. For processor received split shipments, the receipts and transfers should be shown on the monthly performance reports. For eggs and bulk tankers, the USDA is obligated to pay the vendor for the eggs quantities loaded into the tankers at the vendor's plant, while the processor is responsible for the egg quantities received. As a result, two receipts must be entered into WebSCM for this material. The receipted quantity is entered by the recipient processor and the vendor loaded quantity is entered as a receipt by the Agricultural Marketing Service. For bulk cheddar barrel and processor pack mozzarella cheese, we have a modified perfect truckload pilot. Nine processors are participating in this pilot for school year 2017, including Alpha Foods Company, Line Guards Creameries, Bosco's Pizza Company, Conagra Foods, Giorgio Foods, JTM, Land of Lakes, Nardone Brothers Baking Company and Schwann's Food Service. The pilot's goal is to reduce the guesswork for orders of these two cheeses by making up short delivered state orders with twice yearly FNS ordered truckloads into a USDA account. Processors receiving these two cheeses receive in WebSCM for the quantities actually received and allocate and transfer out the state accounts from the USDA account based on receipt shortages so that the states receive the full quantity requested on each sales order. States ordering these two cheeses into processors not included in the modified perfect truckload pilot receive twice yearly credits to their entitlements for the shortfalls. We look forward to a smooth new school year and thanks to everyone for your partnership in helping to make that happen. Rhonda Margie and Mark just presented order management part one and provided you with pertinent information on WebSCM catalog and AMS schedule, the ship to party process, and the steps to be taken in getting destinations updated or inactivated, how to review and make changes to your orders, and finally, the required receiving and receiving procedures for USDA food shipment. We are now going to uh, go over some questions that were received for the webinar. And we have a couple that we have. One question we answered already in the presentation, how many state agencies can share one load going to a further processor? As many as necessary if it is going to the same plant destination. Same product, same plant destination. What steps does a state agency need to go through to view, select a particular BP address in WebSCM? On the distribution division website, um, there is domestic ship to list, www.fns.usda.gov forward slash site forward slash default forward slash files forward slash WebSCM domestic ship to list by business partner. If you cannot see a particular BP address, a business partner address in WebSCM when you're placing an order, you need to email the WBSCM ship to at fns.usda.gov and request that your state be associated with that business partner address. In addition, for those that are on WebSCM, 
that is domestic ship to contact report list on the report tab of WebSDM. Good afternoon. This is Peggy Cantfell. We are screening other questions that are coming in while Shanique was answering some that have been sent over email ahead of time and are going to be um, asking a few other questions too. One of them that just came in, I think this is Rhonda in your section. What is the address for the AMS email list? And I think you have that. I do. I have the email address. It is on the PowerPoint slide, correct? That is correct. Okay, great. Okay, other questions that have come in. Can you tell us how many states have directly implemented WebSDM down to the recipient agency level, the school district level? We know that there are about 20 states that are rolling down either fully to school districts or partially to their larger school districts as receiving organizations. And they have roll down web and use the catalog function, requisition function. There are also about six other states that have a web um, or equal request-driven systems where they download from web and allow their school districts. So we speculated about half the nation are in uh, real-time request-driven ordering systems. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of other questions that have come in. One is where can the perfect load list of processors be accessed on the USDA website for cheese? Uh, that, that list is not out there, but if uh, somebody wants me to send it to them, I know Lorraine Wells has asked that, uh, I can go ahead and do that. Just let, just let us know, uh, or let me know, and I'll go ahead and send that list for, for school year 2017. We have another question. How can I see the same catalog that the states and the um, schools see? That would be the national catalog, correct. But uh, state filter the catalog have their own mechanisms for communicating with the school district. Another question, what are the order due dates for fruits and vegetables? There is an email out there. Should I, should okay. order, order due date that's currently out is April 1st for the fruits and vegetables. April 1st for the initial order of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables, of course, will be put out again later on, but the initial orders are due April 1st. Okay, and we have, if I receive the shipment on Friday, is it okay to receive on Tuesday? The uh, rule is two calendar days, and in theory, first thing Monday morning would be the most acceptable receipt time. Again, if you have your PODs, your proof of delivery, and your BL information, it would be first thing um, Monday morning. And we have another question. Is the delivery date for children, the first delivery, April 2017? Uh, no, it is not. Those are, as Margie explained, placeholder days. We will begin the first deliveries the last, the last half of July, July 16th through July 31st. And we move the orders again in accordance with the processor's request. This is basically a placeholder date. Processor receives frozen commodity product at the buying process begins. Product is discovered to be smaller pieces than normal. You have the effect can the complaint site be used? The complaint site. It can, however, the state that the truck is assigned to has to be the one that enters that complaint into WebSDN. How do you look up the reports and navigate your way through? This is for a school district. If you wish to see the orders that your state has entered, we have the national orders on the web, uh, the FDD website. It's an order status report that's uploaded monthly. It has all the national orders. Again, depending on which state you are in, you should probably, if you wish to see your state's orders, ask the state what they have ordered on your behalf, and they could download an order report and share that information with you if you're a school district that does not have access to that information. Thank you all for joining us on today's webinar.